I am sharing my screen. Let me know once it is visible. Uh, let me, can anyone confirm whether uh, you can able to see my screen? Whether I am audible? Sadhana, can you just uh, confirm whether I am audible? Yes, sir. Also, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay, good, fine. Okay, good. So, I will just uh, recap through the things what we have done. So, for opening the new case, so we have to go with uh, this uh, uh, plus symbol, new, create a new document. So, in that, we can get the blank page like this and we can, there, we can able to uh, start building our single line diagram. So, in the right side, uh, uh, column uh, first uh, column is uh, the AC elements in the second column the top one is uh, the instrumentation element and the bottom one is the DC element so we in ETAP uh, we have uh, multiple studies so the pencil symbol is the edit edit ones there only we can add or delete any uh, elements like uh, transformer cables etc modification in the single line diagram we can done through this edit case only then after that uh, this the pq will be uh, load flow analysis and then this will be short circuit arc flash motor starting analysis harmonic analysis transient stability relay coordination then star production. So these are all the other studies which ETAB e can able to uh, use. So after that, uh, uh, once we open the project, so first we need to include some basic information. Some information we have to go uh, include in project in the project information. So in the information page, it is an optional. Uh, we, we have to enter the project title, location, contractor, who is the engineer who is doing the studies. These are all the very basic one. Uh, it is optional. Then second one is the standard. So standard is an important. So what standard you are going for? Consider as a base standard. So we have two options, IEC and ANSI. So that's uh, standard we need to select. And frequency. So what is the frequency of the particular country? So I am in India here. The frequency is 50 hertz. Someone in Philippines or uh, US, their frequency is 60 hertz. So we need to select that. So the first two thing is the mandatory. And the unit system is uh, English and metric. Two options is there. English for ANSI and metric for uh, uh, IEC then and data uh, date format and currency it is optional so these are all the basic information uh, we have to do it before starting any uh, uh, project or uh, start doing any single line diagram then after that uh, I'm just uh, uh, made the two bus element in our last class we just seen the two bus system so in the two bus system uh, we have seen the bus transformer static load uh, motor load capacitor bank so i will just uh, rebuild that one uh, so first we have to enter the bus element so in the bus element we have to enter the id and uh, the voltage so now we consider the voltages uh, 230 kV then in the low voltage side of the transformer I am considering 11 kV so by defaultly uh, uh, it will be up updated in the transformer 
say in the transformer you have to update the id then standard so here also option is there you can select it but uh, once in the main page we selected the ec standard it will consider here then in the rating page in the transformer we have to uh, update the power rating voltage the voltage after entering the bus voltage it is directly taking the bus voltage here then power rating just i can entering as a 50 MBA. Then impedance page, we need to enter positive sequence and zero second impedance. So if you don't have the actual data, then use the typical X by R value, what uh, the ETAB uh, is given the option. So with that, uh, we can able to get uh, some values from ETAB library. So here the Z variation uh, uh, is uh, to accounting the variation in the transformer tap impedance. So here we are entering 12.5% uh, 12 uh, 12 impedance with respect to nominal tap. So whenever the transformer ta operating at the different tap, let's say the minimum tap and maximum tap so for that tap what is the transformer impedance that impedance we need to encounter it here we need to we need to account it here the next one is the z tolerance z tolerance uh, uh, in the last session i told that uh, for the load flow study we will consider the positive tolerance and uh, short circuit study we will consider the negative tolerance so it is uh, based on the manufacturer so each transformer manufacturer will give the uh, imp transformer with Im uh, impedance that is to, for example this transformer is 12.5 percentage impedance with this 12.5 percentage impedance there is some tolerance so the transformer manufacturer will specify so those transformer mostly will comply uh, any IEC or ANSI standard in IEC uh, there is some uh, requirement uh, for the tolerance requirement so all the transformer complying to that standard has to comply uh, that all to uh, impedance tolerance within that limit so that tolerance we will consider so the positive tolerance we, we have we have to consider for the uh, load flow study and negative tolerance we have to consider for the short circuit study so in the last session itself i told you that it is one of the interview question and uh, that why we have to consider the positive tolerance for the load flow study and negative tolerance for the short circuit study uh, the reason is that to calculate the worst case scenario so whenever the impedance uh, we are considering uh, for this uh, load flow study so we are considering the uh, positive tolerance it means the transformer offering more impedance uh, so that in in the uh, normal load flow analysis so the voltage drop across the transformer will get increased so that will give the worst case result at the remote end transformer remote end buses so so only we are considering the positive tolerance for the load flow study in the negative tolerance for the short circuit study so in in short circuit study we are calculating the um, fault current at the particular buses so when we are considering the negative tolerance that time transformer offer the lesser impedance uh, let's say if the tolerance is 10 percentage means uh, out of the 12.5 percentage 10 percentage will be uh, the negative value so that time it will be somewhere around uh, uh, 10 to 10.5 will be there so that is the impedance offered by the transformer so it can and it can uh, contribute more amount of fault current so the calculated uh, fault current at the particular bus is high so that is we have considered as a worst case scenario so in the transformer tap we have two options one is the fixed tap for the off circuit tap changer and uh, ltc for the on circuit tap changer and uh, grounding 
so grounding here we have to select the winding configuration in the primary presently it is delta configuration in the secondary it is the star configuration so that configuration we have to select for the any load flow study then after that we have the static load here so static load so as usual we have to enter the id then after that we have to enter the power rating so mva let's i am considering just 5 mva at unity per factor so it means it will draw 5 megawatt of real power from the source okay so just i am doing the simple load flow so for for executing the load flow we have to go to the pq that is the load flow in the right side pv is the load flow for the single run if we need to do the multiple uh, run means we have to turn on the auto run on or off once we run uh, enable auto run if we modify any uh, values in the single line diagram then the load flow will uh, run automatically so it will save some amount of time so we can enable that so after that uh, we have the bus voltage now the load flow has been ex executed so bus voltages is here so in the high voltage side it is 100 percentage in the low voltage side it is 99.96 percentage so uh, the the load is trying almost to 60 62.3 ampere from the source so up, up to this we have seen already so if we if we if we need to change uh, the option so here we have the y symbol is the display option in the display option what are the parameters we want to see as the output so those things uh, we can uh, uh, see here so, so i just pressed this uh, kilowatt plus and jkvar so it will give the power flow in kilowatt and kva so we have to change it to mega MBA base so that we can able to we can able to see megawatt and uh, uh, MBA megawatt values just a minute audible can anyone confirm whether i am audible yes sir yeah okay good fine uh, so uh, here we have uh, some reporting option so that reporting option i will tell you so here report manager so this will be our report manager so in the report manager we have uh, the multiple option complete uh, is the uh, total in it will give the overall the power flow load flow analysis result with uh, with uh, considering the input and our output that is the result so if we need only the input alone then we have to go to the input page and uh, we have so many uh, things so what are the inputs we need those things we can go suppose if we need only the result alone so here are the results are there suppose if we need only the summary alone that summary also we here we can execute the result alone uh, if we need to see then uh, here uh, we have to select the load flow re uh, report then viewing action how we want to view so we were we can able to see in this desktop itself pdf means it will generate the result in a pdf ms word means it will generate the result in ms word suppose if i am pressing for view viewer so it will uh, show the result in one more tab So it will come and uh, some and uh, suppose if we need to some analysis means so here the uh, question symbol uh, through that we can able to see some analysis that i will tell you how to do that 
so after pressing this here we can able to get the dialog box like this suppose if you want to see the bus voltages alone so we, we have to select this bus voltage and what are the parameters if we want to see if we click it means then it will uh, appear here then branch result means uh, what are the branches there those branches uh, will come here so load detail means what are the loads are there those details will come here so but unfortunately it is not coming uh, in this uh, box because uh, it is a trial version i think in the original purchased version uh, all the results by clicking when we are clicking uh, the value results what are the things we need to do so those things will appear so from that uh, here one export option is there no so by clicking that export option it will directly uh, create a new excel file so in that excel file we can able to do some analysis but unfortunately in this uh, demo version this is not available display option you need okay then i will uh, uh, introduce uh, another one load option that is a lumped load so we know the static load no so static load having there is no rotating part okay so lumped load is a load uh, which has the combination of static load and dynamic load i will tell you how to model so in the lumped load we have two option single face or three face so that we have to select and as usual name then connected bus in the name plate we have to model how we have to model i will tell you here so here we have to model how much percentage is static load how much percentage is lump load uh, sorry dynamic load so let's say the aggregated static and dynamic load uh, is 5 mva so out of 5 mva 60 percentage i am considering as a constant kva and 60 percentage is constant impedance so constant kva is our uh, static load and constant impedance is our dynamic load so by varying uh, this slider we can able to adjust the ratio how much we can keep 70 30 or uh, uh, 100 suppose if we put uh, everything in uh, constant kva uh, sorry uh, constant kva is the dynamic load and constant jet is the static load that you can able to see here in the uh, can able to see my cursor so 100 percentage is the motor load and a zero percentage is the static load suppose if we want to consider 100 percentage is the static load then we have to put it at this location so the entire uh, values will be 100 percentage static load if we need to keep it to 50 50 then 50 percentage is the motor static load and 50 percentage is motor load that is dynamic load so up to this part uh, we have to model for this load flow sorry this lumped load okay so for doing uh, the load flow so we can press this pq so it is automatically uh, the load flow has been executed because i switched on this auto run on button so it's executed the typical uh, load flow study so i will include this motor load also So in the motor load so we have to select the connection type as usual id in the name plate rating so how how much uh, is the power rating so here by clicking this uh, hp kilowatt will come by clicking kilowatt it hp will come so i'm just considering 1500 kilowatt okay these other details uh, it is taking from the library if you want specific detail these and all you can able to update it okay so at this moment it is 1500 kilowatt okay so now the load flow has been executed 
so uh, for if anyone is not clear with lump load, load i will once again explain you lump load load is a combination of static load this one and motor load this one so the combination of uh, both static and uh, more dynamic load uh, is modeled as a lump load so in that we can able to uh, we can able to select how much percentage is the static load how many percentage is the more dynamic load that we can able to select it when we can use it means in uh, many industries uh, some of the loads are high power rating load 100 kilowatt 200 kilowatt 500 kilowatt 1000 kilowatt 1500 kilowatt 2000 kilowatt like that some motors are higher in capacity but some auxiliary motors are very uh, uh, small power rating in capacity like uh, 1 kilowatt 0.5 kilowatt 0.6 kilowatt uh, some motors are uh, 0.25 kilowatt so like that so their power rating is very very minimal so if we model the entire uh, auxiliary uh, motor load then it is a tedious task so it is a time consuming task in order to avoid that so we, we what we will do we will aggregate it aggregate means we are just grouping the entire axillary load as a single lumped load that lumped load is this one okay i hope everyone is clear with this lumped load okay if you have any doubt as of now you just uh, turn on your mic and uh, you can ask me so i am what i am feeling is that this session is not going as an interactive session so if you have any of now you can just ask me okay if there is no question then we can move further so now we will try to include the generator here generator so generator uh, uh, it's the single generator is for all the uh, generator whether it include including diesel generator or the thermal generator or a hydro generator so it's a single generator is available here so in the generator so first we have to update the id then in generator what we need to do we need to select the operating mode whether it is a swing mode or voltage control mode or mehavar control mode or power factor control mode so that operating mode uh, we have to select it okay so at this moment uh, we are operating at voltage control mode so in this i am just keeping it voltage control mode then in the rating page so we need to enter the power rating of the generator so so i am just considering it is a 2 mohawatt generator it, its power power factor is 85 percentage so in generator the power factor 85 means it is a lagging power factor only it's not a leading power factor so the efficiency is 95 so up to this much uh, we have to we have to include it for the generator Okay. can you able to see but unfortunately there is no power flow from the generator because uh, in the generator we have to include the operating value so the con uh, the etap software is not that much intelligence uh, here to produce the power based on the load unfortunately so we have to for the generator alone how much at the particular uh, load flow scenario how much uh, uh, real power the real power and reactive power the generator is delivering that we have to enter it manually in this operating values so that uh, it will consider that value okay 
so importantly we have to see another parameter that is alert uh, alert uh, in unfortunately this a uh, demo alert is uh, disabled so alert what it means that if any uh, uh, values in uh, in this analysis in this modeling is uh, exceeding the uh, uh, typical value it will show the alert so that particular by clicking that alert we can able to see what all the parameters is uh, exceeding the typical reference value that we can able to see it but unfortunately here we are not able to see that okay okay so i will tell you what happened so in the edit case so we are just calculating the loading based on the design so what it means is that for any uh, uh, load this etap given some option that is design normal shutdown emergency standby summer winter etc so what it means is that in in a particular year so presently uh, one loading patterns will be there after three month the pattern will change then after three month the pattern will change so in order to account that so we can able to make some category in the software so here they mention as design so that design only we are considering uh, in this uh, edit case that one only we are solving so in the loading category we are just uh, considering the design what are the load values particularly in entered in the design that design we are taking and similarly in the generation also we are just uh, considering the values from the design so uh, we have to enter the value in the design also so that particular value this generator will deliver okay suppose if you want if, if the generator is operating at a different power level for an example uh, one time it will generate 2 megawatt suppose in another time it will generate only 0 0.5 0 0.5 megawatt means uh, for that condition for that condition when we are going to do the uh, analysis that time we have to consider that one so what now what i done so in the edit case uh, in the loading uh, i just considered uh, the design of the values entered in design for the load category in the generation category i just consider normal in place of design so it means the reduced power generation capacity so what uh, value I entered in this normal I just entered 0 0.5 megawatt the generator has to deliver so when the generator when uh, when we are running the power flow so the software what we, it will do it will consider the load from the design but the value en entered in the design uh, and uh, for the generator it will consider what is the value entered in the normal so that power value it will dis dispatch it here 
so that is the only uh, thing we have to uh, keep it in mind when we are doing the uh, generator modeling so now again i am changing it to design category so now it will deliver 2 megawatt now it is fine no so for your exam for the example so what i am trying to do in this modeling so i'm just going to switch off uh, this uh, swing bus so do you presume whether the load flow will uh, run for this system yes just to see uh, with this uh, voltage control it is running but this generator we have to keep this as a swing generator that could that is the correct one so when the generator is operating in a swing mode it will uh, deliver it can able to operate so it can't operate in the voltage control mode it has to operate in the swing mode only okay suppose uh, i'm just connecting one more generator here one more generator here at this uh, 250 kv just uh, i am putting swing generator so this could be somewhere around 200 megawatt so in the design page it will not enable because i put it in swing mode so design will not enable so in the last session we seen that uh, uh, three type of buses uh, swing bus uh, generator bus and load bus uh, since it is modeled as a swing bus so it will deliver uh, 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 unlimited real and reactive power to the load okay so just i'm switching off uh, this one just as switching off uh, this uh, grid bus so now also the load flow will get execute but load flow will execute but unfortunately this generator is not delivering any power because it is delivered by this generator suppose this generator is not in service then entire power will be delivered by this swing bus only now if i switch off this generator also whether it will run now it will not run because there is no swing generator so we will get the error like this the system has no swing uh, bus or generator so our system will not run so at least we should have one swing bus in the system okay and uh, what are the other components cable we have seen in that last session wind turbine generator okay i will model one wind turbine generator have you anyone seen uh, the wind turbine generator model so in the wind turbine generator uh, what are the things we have to do so first uh, we have to understand about the wind turbine generator so in the wind turbine generator there are uh, four types are there type 1 2 3 4 so type 1 and 2 is almost uh, absolute in stage so mostly presently we are using with uh, type 3 and type 4 generators only so that we have to select whether it is a type 3 or a type 4 generator so based on that uh, so that we have to select 
and the operating mode we have to select so once we change it that type then automatically it is changing its operating mode so mostly type 4 generator will operate in voltage control mode only so that option we just get enabled so here some uh, typical wind turbine generator library is there suppose if we want uh, the generator to be modeled uh, as per this then we can uh, model as per this library so after uh, entering this info page we have to go to the rating page in that one the power rating of the generator is 2 megawatt then output voltage is 0 0.69 kV and power factor is 92 percentage so these are the things uh, we just model it from uh, from the library okay so now whether the load flow will run for this case definitely no because the bus voltage is 11 kV here but the generate the wind turbine generator voltage is 0 0.69 uh, kV okay so normally in a practical plant so the wind turbine generator voltage will be in 0 0.69 kV only 0 0.69 kV only 0 0.69 so how we will connect we will connect we will uh, connect the wind turbine generator through a dedicated wind turbine generator transformer so we will uh, generally use one uh, transformer here so this transformer uh, uh, we will use so the power rating is almost uh, uh, e higher than the uh, wind turbine rating so would, uh, for a time being i just considering 3 mva as the power rating so the primary voltage is 11 kv and secondary voltage is 0 0.69 kv then impedance i am just uh, selecting the typical uh, impedance the tap i am not modeling any tap so but in practical system in most of the wind turbine generator transformer has this off circuit tap changer the uh, on circuit tap changer will not be available in the wind turbine generator mostly off circuit tap changes only available here so in the grounding page i am just considering delta in the primary side and uh, star in the secondary side okay so now we have to connect the generator to this so here some uh, shapes are little weird no so for that what we need to do control r will rotate the connection so if you, you need to rotate the equipment then we need to press control r now suppose if we need to rotate this equipment means we need to select and press control r then uh, the connection point will get rotate okay now the wind turbine generator has been modeled so for executing the load flow we have to go to the load flow page okay but we have not entered the cable model just a minute so if you to enter the cable model and the day how told in the case for the cable we have to enter the cable id this is optional length so length is mandatory so just i am keeping it in kilometer unit just considering one kilometer is the cable length so in the library page there are some uh, standard uh, details available so from that we can take it any one uh, value or we can enter as per our uh, details from the cable manufacturer data sheet okay so once we updated this library then it will appear in this uh, impedance page this positive sequence and uh, zero sequence impedance will be automatically updated once we model the cable in the that uh, library page now it will execute the load flow for this wind turbine generator so you can able to see this wind turbine generator is delivering two megawatt of uh, just a minute
can anyone confirm whether I'm, uh, whether I'm audible? Hello, can anyone confirm whether I'm audible? Yes, sir, audible. Yeah, okay, good, fine. So this wind turbine is uh, delivering 2 megawatt of active power and uh, 0 megawatt of reactive power. Okay, but uh, can you able to see uh, in the transformer low voltage side, the real power is 2 megawatt and reactive power is 0. But in the high voltage side, can you able to see the real power is 1.99 megawatt and reactive power is minus 0 0.082 megawatt. So here the difference, why this difference is the losses in the transformer. So the power flow, the RO mark we have to see. So in the real power, it is flowing from this generator towards the system. So the RO mark is like that. So here it is 2 megawatt, here it is 1.99. So the transformer having the power loss. So after the power loss, we are getting the reduced value. So some amount of power is lost in the transformer. Okay. And uh, here uh, the reactive power is minus 0 0.082. So what it means is that uh, the transformer for the transformer operation we need some reactive power no so that reactive power the transformer is taken from this uh, source so so only it is generating minus uh, it is taking uh, 82 kvar of uh, uh, reactive power from the source Suppose if we model this generator also delivering some reactive power, then uh, this transformer will consume the reactive power from the generator and after the remaining reactive power only we can able to see it in the bus. Impedance page perfect here. So Q max means uh, how much we can able to deliver. So let's see, I'm entering 0.1. Control mode. Point 0.1 can able to see so this generator is delivering um, point 0.1 meha hour of reactive power so can able to see this transformer high voltage side it is not point 0.1 it is 0 0.018 so the the sign is positive last time it is negative now it is positive uh, it uh, it means uh, the both the real power and reactive power is flowing from this generator towards the uh, system. So earlier uh, reactive power is consumed from the system by this transformer. Now the transformer is consuming the reactive power from the generator. So the, uh, the remaining reactive power only is flowing into this system. Okay. So that's all for uh, this uh, wind turbine modeling. Some other modeling is there that these are all the things uh, we needed for the short circuit study, not for the load flow study. I will explain uh, other things in the uh, short circuit study. Then after that, so these are all the elements uh, mostly we will use, okay. Uh, and what are the other things we can do? So for the exporting report, just we have to complete press it, click export. So we will get the report like this.
so it will uh, uh, generate the uh, report and it will show if in anyone's uh, university if the if uh, uh, you people having the option for this software the then better you can uh, take the training or uh, you can use that uh, software etap software available in the university because in demo version some feature may not available but unfortunately this report feature is not available in this demo version so only it is not coming but in 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 a licensed version in the university uh, you can able to uh, see uh, those things okay and uh, sun uh, option is there that is uh, pvra in the the pvra is available in this uh, ac component also similarly uh, in dc component also dc component also this will be the pvra so if you are doing the ac load flow analysis that time you have to use this one suppose if it is a dc load flow analysis then we you have to use this one so in the ac load flow analysis so we have to we have to uh, connect the pv then we have to model uh, how many solar pv uh, modules we have how much uh, what is the rating of the inverter those information we have to add it so in the solar panel uh, what is the rating of the solar panel single uh, watt rating for an example it is 350 uh, watt peak panel means we have to enter is 350 then like that uh, uh, how many number of panel is there so that we have to model it so suppose if it is one panel then it will also become 350 then vmp means uh, uh, voltage uh, at uh, maximum peak power vvc is open circuit voltage okay imp means uh, peak current isc means short circuit current okay so these values we need to enter here uh, the library is there but unfortunately is disabled here so from that also we can able to select uh, those values that if i am just putting some random values here okay so now we just modeled the rating of one uh, pv panel then uh, array so panel is a one element array is a uh, uh, multiple uh, panels in panel only one panel will be there at the voltage of uh, 350 watt peak in array we have uh, many number of uh, uh, panels so 350 watt peak panel how many number of uh, series connection we have how many number of parallel connection we have so these things and all we have to calculate uh, based on the particular site uh, condition only just i am putting some uh, eight number of uh, series connection is there and 10 number of parallel connection is there okay so the total uh, uh, power rating is uh, 28 kilowatt let's say this also 10 then totally 35 kilowatt uh, we have the capacity okay so the total solar pv system capacity is 35 kilowatt so then we have to model the inverter so some values are it's taken from the pv array page so we are having the uh, total kilowatt as 35 kilowatt and system voltage also it calculate uh, it it is taken from this one 350 volt then uh, then it, it calculates the equivalent ampere here okay so this part uh, we have to model in the inverter part so what is the rating of the dc part and ac part so we have 35 kilowatt in the dc part no the same also we can consider 35 
this one, with this that one we can't uh, directly edit it here that part we have to edit in this inverter option so this inverter modeling part alone we have to do it in this inverter editing option so in this option so we have to consider the dc power rating is 35 kilowatt and the dc voltage is 350 okay so the efficiency part is here so that we have to enter it accurately then in the ac part in the ac side how much is the kv rating and how much is the voltage rating that part we have to update it here so now it is uh, modeled so uh, another one more option is there that is uh, pv array to the inverter so in the dc side after the solar pv panel uh, there will be a DC cable between the solar PV panel to the inverter. So if we are modeling that cable separately, uh, then this one is not required. Suppose if you are not modeling separately, we have to model the uh, DC cable. If we no need to consider that cable, then we can ignore it. If we need to model, then in, we have to model inside this cable library so, so just i am taking some uh, random value so i am just selected one uh, 250 uh, square mm cable size single core copper cable uh, uh, it is connected between the solar pv array to this inverter so that much only for the solar pv panel Can able to see this uh, solar inverter is uh, uh, delivering almost uh, 0 0.032 megawatt so what it means uh, it is delivering almost uh, 32 kilowatts 31.5 kilowatt it is delivering so, so some of the thing what we need to consider is that uh, this uh, PV curve and IV curve. So two things we need to know. One is the PV curve and IV curve. So the solar uh, PV system, it's not like our uh, typical uh, thermal power plant or hydro power plant. So for the solar, solar PV system, it's a little different from our conventional power generation. So for uh, before start modeling any solar PV system, uh, you have to understand what is uh, PV curve, IV curve, what is uh, the irradiance. Those things uh, we have to first understand and uh, after that only we have to model uh, the solar PV system. So like that uh, we have to model the solar PV system. Any doubt in this uh, wind turbine modeling and solar PV modeling? Okay, good. If there is no doubt, then uh, that's all from my end uh, for uh, today's session. So, uh, in this session, uh, we have uh, just uh, uh, recall what are the things we have seen in this session so we have uh, seen the generator component uh, in this session so how to model the generator and also we have seen the lumped load so the lumped load is the combination of uh, static load and dynamic load so in the lump load we have to select how much percentage we need static and how much percentage we need and dynamic so that one we have to consider we have to select it and also we have seen the wind turbine uh, generator so in the wind turbine generator how we have to model uh, 
those things we have seen so in the info page so first we have to select what is the type of uh, WTG whether it is type 1 or type 2 or type 3 or type 4 so those uh, things first we need to select it uh, then after that in the rating page so we have to enter the power rating of the generator then uh, power factor then efficiency okay so these are all the things uh, we need to consider for the wind turbine generator uh, and then lastly we seen the solar pv system so in the solar pv system so first we have to model this solar pv panel so this is the individual model so from that we have to calculate the we have to model the solar pv array so how many number of uh, panel is there in series and parallel for the particular inverter then we have to model the inverter so in the inverter page in the inverter page so we have to model the inverter through this inverter editor so in this inverter editor in the rating page so we have to model the dc rating uh, kilowatt voltage then this v max and v max is the dc bus maximum and minimum operating voltage so uh, 90 percentage is the minimum voltage and 110 uh, percentage is the maximum voltage so and also we have to move, consider the efficiency for the different loading so suppose here it is 100 percentage the efficiency is 90 percentage so when the inverter is operating at uh, 75 percentage loading then it is efficiency is 90 percentage so like that uh, we have to model the efficiency then the ac power rating so we have to consider the kva rating of the inverter then uh, voltage then full load current if you enter any two parameter then the next parameter will be automatically calculated so these are the things we have seen and also uh, what we have seen uh, we have seen this uh, auto run on and off feature and also the report manager and load flow analyzer so these are all the things we have seen in this session so today is the last uh, session for the load flow analysis so i am i am suggesting everyone to just uh, go through the components uh, in the etab software uh, before the next session and uh, I, I am suggesting you to start using this software for uh, minimum uh, 20 to 30 minutes at uh, touch base in a day so that you will you will become familiarized with uh, the usage of the component and usage of the software in a month's time so that's all from my end uh, if you have any questions uh, you